Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Alina Islam, and I'm a senior research associate here at Red Cloud Securities. I'm very pleased to introduce Grounded Lithium to you today, a lithium exploration company focused on advancing its Kindersley brine project in Saskatchewan. For the webinar today, we have with us Greg Smith, president and CEO. For those of you who've sat in on our earlier webinars, we generally follow uh, two formats for the webinar. Greg will first provide an introduction to the company, which may include current activities underway and catalysts that may lie ahead. And then after the presentation, we'll take your questions live. Please send us your questions via the chat box and we'll get through as many as we can. Before I do get before we get started, I do need to mention the fine print. For grounded lithium, there may be some forward-looking statements made on this call. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the grounded lithium corporate presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud Securities, I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. We note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investment. Please see our most recent research located on our website for grounded lithium specific disclosures. With that, Greg, I'll hand it over to you. Please take it away. Thank you, Elena. It's a pleasure to be here and it's a pleasure to be discussing um, our, our assets, our team's ability to execute and how we're gonna progress this project towards commercial production. Because ultimately that's where we wanna to get to. The, uh, just, we're proud of where we've gotten to in a very short period of time. The photo on your left is of the, uh, the aerial photo of our first well drilling. And considering we've only been around a little over two years, that's a solid achievement. As mentioned, there are forward-looking statements. Um, we believe in what we're doing. We've been investing in every round as we move forward and we'll continue to do so. So we believe in it, but we must make you aware that there are risks involved. Um, as a company, we know where we're going. We set a vision for ourselves and we wanted to build a best in class, environmentally responsible lithium salt producer. And when I say best in class, that's not to diminish the activities of our peers. We just went out and purposely chose an area that had good solid lithium in an area where we felt like we could be the most cost competitive from a capital and operational perspective. <clears throat> The um, team itself, um, they're builders, and they've been doing it with success. It's a solid uh, group that we have put together to build this project. When we first started looking at this project, price of lithium was $10,000 per ton. It's obviously a lot higher than that today, and we felt like we'd make it, we could make money at $10,000 per ton. So this is all upside for us. And you also see a lot of government support for our industry starting to come together to help push towards this new energy transition. Uh, as I said, we're, we're relatively young, so it's early stage. Um, the team we, we put together, we built it purposely for building this, and we chose the different skill sets that we needed for, for building this forward, as well as people with a track record of success. So um, the other key founder, along with myself, is Greg Fanuf. Uh, He He's the CFO and Senior VP of Corporate Development. And then we've also added in geology, geophysics, engineering, and a landman. We see a landman as crucial for helping us grow our position and manage the regulatory side of our business. Like the team itself, the board, uh, successful individuals all in their own right. They all have strong board experience so that they can provide the necessary governance for us, but they also provide the skill sets that we need in terms of engineering, geology, finance, capital markets. There's lots of experience in that field amongst our board, and they provide great guidance and leadership to the team. Among our advisors, I'd like to draw your attention to the top of the list, Wayne Monnery. 
He's a PhD chemical engineer that has worked on DLE for others. And he's also worked in concert with the University of Alberta, looking at what their research into direct lithium extraction. And that was all part of our initiative as a company. We're a resource company only. But at the same time, we know we have to understand the technology. Um, there's lots of companies out there developing the technology, and we need to understand them all. And that's our internal expertise. We're proud of our track record in terms of moving quickly from our inception to where we are today. And in the far right track, the, we've been continually increasing our land position. Um, we started late 2020 when we put in our own capital and started acquiring land so that we ended up with 35 sections of land, a, a section being 250, 200, yeah, 260 acres or 640, sorry, I said it backwards, 260 hectare, hectares, 640 acres. So we've, we started out with a strong land position and we've only grown it since then. As we've grown our position, we've drilled wells on it and uh, tested it, as well as produced new technical resource reports independently done by Sproul and Associates, taking our new number to 4.2 million tons of lithium carbonate in place. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. And throughout that, we've been raising capital We've proven we have a track record of being able to raise capital when we need it, and we've raised about $10 million to date. This is about the backdrop or tailwind that we see ourselves in right now. Uh, again, price has gone up, and that's the graph on the lower left, on the right side of the lower left. But the graph we like to look at is the one that is sort of projecting supply and demand, which is the very far lower left. And that graph is showing that, you know, we've got close to, it's the supply demand um, balance, if you will. And we've got close to balance here in the near future. But what we're seeing now is a lot of gigafactories are coming on stream globally in that 2026, 2027 timeframe. And that's when the real crunch for lithium salts for batteries is going to occur. And that same backdrop occurs in North America as well. Currently, Asia is a decade ahead of Europe and North America, and we are working hard to get caught up. The, they produce about 35% of the resource and then control a lot of it globally as well through ownership. But when it comes to the chemical side, the anode battery cathode side of the business, it's dominated by Asia. So North America itself has made initiatives to change that. And we've seen that both in the US and Canada with recent announcements made by uh, the governments of both countries. So we sit in a strong position to be a supplier into that North American market, especially given the timing. We like to say we're in the right co postal code. We are operating within the Leduc or in Saskatchewan called the Dupereau Formation. We have to the northwest of us E3 that's just recently announced some upgrades to their resource report. Um, and to the far southeast of us, we have uh, Prairie Lithium who just recently sold to Arizona Lithium. Um, and they have about 4.1 million, 4 million tons of lithium carbonate equivalent. So we're in the right postal code, and we purposely chose this area for a number of reasons I'd like to highlight to you. One, we had the lithium concentrations identified, and it fit with our geological model. Um, this is the shallowest position to be chasing it, so that has a big impact on our cost structure. Furthermore, we don't see any contaminants in the area like oil, natural gas, or H2S. Any of those contaminants are detrimental to our extraction process and they need to be removed. So that, that reduces some of our pre-filtering requirements to move our brine through the extraction process. 
This is the uh, schematic cross-section that heads from central Alberta to southeast Saskatchewan that was indicated on the previous slide. And the colorful part in the middle is the Leduc Dupro geology. We purposely went here because, well, it has lithium within it for a number of reasons. Um, when this was laid down, this colorful section, this happened 420 million years ago when Western Canada was an open ocean. And this was the Great Barrier Reef of the world. So we chose this area because after it was laid down and subsequently structured, it became the shallowest position. It also, because of its per position in the geology, had thick reservoir, which we need for both brine storage and the deliverability. We also note that oil migrated north-south and is in the Leduc, but it happened before this structure was formed and it does not have those contaminants within it. We're not seeing the oil or natural gas or H2S within our system here. So a lot of positives for us for trying to be best in class by finding the resource within a position that provides the lowest cost structure to us. Currently we own 333 sections of land and of those 333, 299 are on this map sheet. Uh, the town of Kindersley caters to the oil and gas industry within this area. All the oil and gas occurs in a shallower formation, dominantly within the Viking formation. So it's a very active area for oil and gas development. Uh, we recently announced the acquisition of uh, 33 sections of land on this map. Those sections would have come in just uh, to where we're just to the southwest of where we're indicating our initial program will be. When we drilled our first well, which is indicated there in the middle of where we're locating all of our locations for future development, uh, when we drilled that well, uh, we didn't have all of this data that we do have now. So it helped us with our resource report as well as when we acquired this additional land, it added to the land position that we have. That well proved to us that we could produce out of this area at about 19,500 barrels per day based on a drilling configuration and a certain size electrical submersible pump. So that factors in to produce that 10,000 ton tons per year out of a facility located in this area. I should point out that our central facility would be on a um, paved highway running north-south out of Kindersley. And Kindersley has paved highways running both north-south and east-west. So we have lots of uh, scope to access this area. Based on 19,500 barrels per day per well, we can estimate that we need about 22 wells to produce our acreage. That means we'll drill 24. We already have one. We're going to drill another 24, which is more than what we need to produce. But that's sort of giving us the redundancy for when wells are being worked on, cleaned up, changing out pumps, etc. So we've got the locations notified. We've informed the provincial government of where we intend to do this, and we intend to move this forward. The acquisition that we did in here of 33 sections, we saw as very accretive because it, it added to our total of lithium carbonate equivalent of just shy of half a million bear, uh, tons of lithium carbonate equivalent. Again, we like the depth that we're in, the depth to our total, the total depth to the top of our zone is about 900 meters. And we plan on drilling another 200 plus meters into the zone to open it all up for production. We aren't just proud of our DLE or our LCE uh, across our acreage of 4.2 million tons. We're proud of how we got there. Uh, we understood up front, we're gonna move a lot of brine through to a facility. We need to understand how that we're gonna do the plumbing on the surface, but we also need to understand how we're gonna do the plumbing underground. So to that end, we knew that we would have to build a depletion model in three dimensions. To that end, we're using a Schlumberger product called Petrel. We have a very large 
model built across this acreage to help us understand how it will flow through time. But because that is a three-dimensional model, it also gives us easy access to understand how much brine is it within every single piece of land that we own or occurs within the area. Very easy to do a volumetric assessment. So that takes us to our 4.2 million tons and we're using it today to help us determine our interwell distance to optimize and that transmissibility through the reservoir. How will the brine flow through the reservoir so that we can produce it? As we've already stated, we're in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan is highly ranked by this Fraser Institute. It's ranked number three behind Arizona and Nevada for favorable jurisdictions to work within. Uh, we like working there. Um, 2009, I was Saskatchewan Oilman of the Year working in Southeast Saskatchewan. And uh, we continue to grow through time here in this, in this particular area. We like to say, we didn't choose Saskatchewan, it chose us because we just followed the geology to where we thought it would be best, and it's in Saskatchewan. The area we are in, it has major highways running north, south, east, west. We've got uh, lots of infrastructure for rail, um, many natural gas pipelines, both uh, sourcing it locally, as well as transporting it through major pipelines to the east. Uh, we have all the three phase power we could potentially need because SAS power operates in the area. They're supplying power for oil and gas facilities and they have uh, facilities in the area that generate lots of power. So this is a good place to be working in. Investors wanna know, well, how are we gonna get this out? What's the process for direct lithium extraction? The Data cube or geology cube on your left shows that we plan on producing the brine out of the Dupro and probably injecting it into a slightly deeper horizon that can take all that brine as we produce it so that we avoid that dilution factor in the zone from fresh from brines that have been depleted. It'll then go into the extraction process. And how are we going to do that extraction? We're going to stand on the shoulders of giants. We're not going to be a technology company. We're doing an evaluation. To that end, we've hired Hatch Engineering, who's working with our internal engineers and the internal consultant, who's the PhD chemical engineer and an expert in DLE. And out of that, we looked at the spectrum of companies out there that do DLE. Out of that, we chose the six that we thought would be the most appropriate for working with. And we put them through a questionnaire and ringer process to understand who is likely going to be the best. Out of that, we've chosen two. We've made press releases here in the recent past of the companies that we are choosing. We One of them risks to still remain anonymous, but it's out there. We're moving it forward um, and we've shipped brine. We, we produced brine from our wells and now it's being shipped to these labs owned by others to do their lab pilot work on our brines so that we can then predict who do we think will be the best to work with our brine. Um, and that's an up and coming piece of business that we, we will announce. After the brine uh, is, the lithium is extracted from the brines, it then moves over to the polishing or salt stage. And I'll note that uh, Lake Resources just had an announcement out in terms of following a process like this, that they've been now producing quality salts using direct lithium from brine. <clears throat> We're ready. We production tested on our well. This was done in November when we had snow already in Saskatchewan. Um, and after we had done our evaluations of which candidates to use, we selected two of them. Each one of these containers that you see in the picture on the right contains about six and a half barrels of brine. And we've been shipping those off to uh, labs across North America for understanding which will be the best process for our brine. Uh, we think brines offer a distinct advantage over other techniques. Um, we won't be an open pit mine. Um, not only would we not be allowed to do these large evapoconcentration ponds like they're using in South America, uh, they wouldn't work for us given our location in Saskatchewan. But you were seeing a lot of 
people pushing away from the large evapoconcentration ponds for a number of reasons. Our facility looked much like the one that you see on the lower right, and there'll be a group of 24, 25 wells all feeding their brine into a facility like this to produce out lithium salts. <clears throat> On this graph, it's all about the Lego blocks, building this forward towards commerciality. And we expect to see this slide uh, with more building blocks moving us towards commerciality coming out later this month. Anything that's orange is work that's already been done. Blue is work that is work in progress. So in terms of moving towards that goal of a preliminary economic assessment, most of the work's done. We're just now wrapping up the testing, the lab pilots that I've mentioned, which will be the, which technology we're choosing. But fortunately, those technologies have a lot of things in common. So we can build out the cost estimates for our process as we move forward. Once the cost estimates are done, that'll merge with the uh, resource assessments and we will build out the economics of our project for a preliminary economic assessment. That then allows us to start thinking about what's that commercial or pilot plant going to look like. Uh, we already have a number of ideas in, in plan there, but it'll continue while we're also moving forward with the permitting of our project so that we can be commercial in terms of our productivity by 2026. That is our goal, which again, if you recall the global demands curves, that's when we expect things to really get tight for lithium. We want to be there to meet the demand. Uh, this is our capitalization. So currently we sit just shy of 70 million common shares. Uh, fully diluted, that takes us to uh, 92.8 uh, common shares. A large part of that is the uh, warrants that we issued with our last um, fundraise. Uh, at 25 cents, they came with a full 50 cent warrant. Uh, there are management incentives as well as finder warrants in that mix to take us to the 92.8. Um, currently, we have about 1.5 million in the bank, uh, which will take us through to uh, it, building out our PEA, which is on the near term horizon. We hope to have that out in this quarter uh, that just started. <laughs> and uh, we sort of sit around a capitalization of north of uh, 26 million today. We've been investing in every round. We believe in what we're doing. So the ownership currently is we insiders, we own 14%. The uh, there's institutional ownership of 17%. And then most of our ownership is retail. Uh, there are a large, there's some significant holders on the retail side that are uh, very uh, valuable shareholders and uh, to us. We think uh, we have a long ways to go. We certainly see peers that are trading at higher multiples today. But uh, when we look across, we think there's some comps here that help show where we can end up through the future. And our plan is we're just stepping up the value change so every shareholder that invests in grounded lithium can benefit in the long run. One of the comps would be the recent purchase of Arizona, of Prairie Lithium by Arizona Lithium, which was a cash and share deal uh, worth about just shy of 71 million. Uh, when we look at that transaction in terms of what was the EV per ton, I mean the enterprise value on a per ton basis, that equates to about $17.22 per ton. If we apply that same metric to us, that puts us at uh, more or less three times where we're trading today. So there's lots of comps out there suggesting we can move upwards in terms of value. Um, the part on the right is our, the a number of the numbers that are in our model, our economic model. We know what our wells will cost. We know what it costs to pipeline because of our oil and gas background. When we look across at what people say their facilities will cost, it's a surprisingly tight field in terms of it comes out around 21,000 uh, US dollars per ton of uh, plant capacity. So we can build that into our model as well. And what it shows to us is there's strong metrics 
in what we're doing. It can, it can really push out cash as we move forward. And that's one of the reasons we're in this business. Uh, it has strong multipliers on the invested dollar. So just wrapping this up before we move over to co co questions, we see one of the reasons we went here is we saw a lot of tailwinds moving into this energy transition business. And we are, see ourselves as a good placeholder within that sector. We built together a proven resource development team. They all have had success in their areas of expertise and we're pulling that together to make a strong pitch for going commercial. We will need to add to our team through time, but uh, this is where we stand today. Saskatchewan, can't say enough about working in Saskatchewan. It's a tier one jurisdiction. If we have issues that we wanna talk about with the Crown, they're a phone call away. And we've only been around two years, a little over two years, coming up on two and a half. Uh, it's a great starting point. point. We're early entry. And so we like what we're doing. We're investing and uh, we'll continue to do so. And uh, I would like to open this up to questions. Well, thanks a lot, Greg. Uh, that was a great presentation. I'd just like to remind everyone on the line that you can type your questions into the chat box at any time. So Greg, we do have a couple of questions. Um, first off, you'd mentioned the uh, first test well that had been drilled. Do you plan any additional test wells? Oh, yes. Um, we'll be looking to do some of that later this year as we raise more capital. Um, and that will be expanding our, our us out from where we currently have the data and also then also potentially contributing towards our understanding of both the brines as well as deliverability, which we're very confident in, but uh, that'll help us understand all of that and um, <clears throat> move everything forward. Yes. Okay. Um, so based on your last acquisition, Greg, and the updated resource, there seems to be a very linear relationship between resource growth and the land package. Now, I'm not sure if you can speak to it, but do you have any further plans of filling in that checkerboarded land package that you have? Yes, we're always open for business. And um, if you look at the development plan we put forward, even though it's on um, contiguous land position, we're developing at an interwell distance of approximately 2,300 meters on average which means we're developing on a checkerboard. So we can work within the framework of a checkerboard or a contiguous land position, but we plan on building out and we will be contiguous as much as we can as well. Okay, all right. Um, next question on, on resource. Um, how do your estimates of grade and tonnage compare to some of your peers? Um, we're, we're in the middle of the pack. Um, the grade is, um, that we put into our resource report is 74 milligrams per liter. Um, if you compare that to some of the brines in South America, that would be a low number, but it's an average number that we see within Saskatchewan. Um, some people have gone and tested, uh, shallower horizons within the Leduc du Perot separately. Um, and we thought of doing that to get uh, different values out of those other horizons. But in the end, you won't produce it that way. You need all zones contributing. So that's why we tested all zones at once. And that gave us the number of 74. Now, having said that, you know, we've had values. We reported that we had values of uh, 72 to 80. Uh, milligrams per liter, but the reality is we had some that were higher and we chose to just say, well, that's that's an outlier. Um, <clears throat> and we didn't really report that number, but we do have lots of data to work with and we're confident in the quality of the brines we have. In terms of the total LCE, I can say that we bring a level of technical rigor to the our understanding by virtue of building the three-dimensional model and doing the pet petrophysical corrections to all the wells that go into the model. So it provides a very detailed estimate on every single section of land. It's not a, 
one size fits all that every single section has this much brine within it. Uh, ours is very specific to every section because of how we've done it. So um, having s said that, you know, we're very proud of the rigor that we bring to the table. It's a standard that we're used to applying in the oil and gas sector. And we now find ourselves in the mining sector um, applying similar sort of technical uh, rigor to the project. Oh, great. Um, so just uh, moving over onto the lab pilot that you mentioned. When do you expect results to start trickling in? Uh, well, each of the uh, lab pilots would take four to six weeks. And all of that, Brian's been delivered it. And some of it is two weeks ago. So we could be seeing results here in the near future. Um, and a lot of the Brian companies that were, or the extraction companies that we're working with, they're very excited to be working on our brines and looking at our project. They're excited. They're, they, are, they are very keen to be involved with our project. Right. Okay. And then, uh, Greg, can you clarify the timing of the PEA again? We believe it'll come out in June. Now, if I had to characterize us as oil, from the oil and gas sector, it's disciplined impatience because we're used to seeing us drill a well and get cash flow in a matter of months. And in this business, it looks like years. So everything we do, we do as quickly as we can. And I think that comes out clearly when you look at how far we've progressed in just a little over two years. We are accomplishing a lot in a short period of time and we will continue to work fervently on that moving forward because we want to be commercial in 2026. So on, on that note, Greg, and maybe last question here, um, could you maybe then provide a summary of catalyst that investors have to look forward to in, let's say, the next six to 12 months? Sure. Well, first of all, you're going to see announcements on our selection of direct lithium extraction. As we complete our announcements on um, uh, the analysis of what it's going to cost to do what we're going to do, we'll be making announcements in terms of our cost structure. It'll all get wrapped up into the DL, the PEA report, and the PEA report will also reflect the economics that flow from the uh, resource assessment. Uh, Sproul and Associates is our independent resource evaluator, and they will also run the economics. We'll be running it as well because that's what we do, but uh, it'll come out of, it'll be a third party economic package that runs our economics. So you'll see all of that come together in the PEA. Um, also, we'll be announcing how we are going to progress to do the uh, pilot or demonstration work uh, prior to building out a commercial facility in the area. And we hope to be making announcements in terms of locations and, uh, and drilling. We're looking to try to take advantage of some of the announcements that came out in terms of how our industry now qualifies for CEE and CDE costs. All right. Well, sorry, were you going to mention something else? Yeah, those locations uh, that we drill will provide us not just more brine sampling, which everybody in the mining sector is all about grade. And because we come from the oil and gas sector, we like to say, yeah, it's about the grade, but it's also about your ability to deliver it. And which is one of the reasons we chose this area. We, so we look to be continually demonstrating that positive nature of our area with the ability to, for it to deliver large volumes of brine to meet the needs of the facility that we'll build. Okay, all right. Well, lots to look forward to there, Greg. Um, again, I'd like to thank you for hosting this webinar with us today. Uh, just as a reminder for our audience, our next webinar webinar will feature Rx Minerals, and that's tomorrow, April 4th at 2 p.m. Eastern. That concludes the webinar for, for today, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you.